My name is Cara Dribola Corollas. I'm here representing the Hawaii State Commission on the Status of Women, and I'm supporting all of our community organizations and members in calling Governor Ige to extend Hawaii's eviction moratorium and to put public interest ahead of business interests. You know, COVID-19 has been a litmus test for the humanity of our community. It's revealed incredible generosity and unfortunately, incredible greed. But not just at an individual level, but by the way that certain systems are designed. For-profit housing uh, is one of those systems, as well as the legal system that protects it. If we do not institute reforms, as well as extend Hawaii-specific eviction moratorium, we are going to witness the biggest eviction crisis since Hawaii's traditional land tenure system was converted into a fee-simple ownership system. Yesterday, the director of the Mediation Center for Hawaii went to the press and said that the CDC moratorium was meaningless. Right now, there is mass chaos and misinterpretation of what that moratorium means. She also said that they are anticipating at least 10,000 eviction cases within the initial period. This would triple our homeless population in Hawaii almost overnight, and just staggering it through mediations is not nearly enough. We're calling for a state level eviction moratorium for these reasons. Not just the mass chaos, the fact that the CDC moratorium is open to interpretation by a conservative legal system, also, it's the fact that it's tied to COVID spread and not economic well-being. That itself is problematic. We need a preventative approach, not an emergency room approach, to defeat the COVID-19 crisis as a collective and as a community. The CDC moratorium also requires tenants to challenge landlords in courts. And I can tell you why that's a problem because I too am a renter and a mother. During the COVID-19 crisis, I had to move twice. First, because my landlord was not making uh, appropriate uh, adjustments and improvements to our unit, so it was not habitable. And the second time, because my landlord wanted to charge $100 per child on top of what the rent was and to increase the rent. So we moved units at the peak of the pandemic. It is simply, and I didn't go to court. I would never have been counted, right, as an eviction because it is not rational for a renter to go to court in a system that's rigged against renters. I would have ruined my credit score. I would have risked uh, having housing insecurity possibly indefinitely. I would have risked double rent. I would have risked attorney's fees and debt for an indetermined amount for who knows how long. Even as someone who is a US citizen, proficient in English, resource with a steady job, that is too big of a gamble. And who has the most to lose are women on Friday if our Hawaii eviction moratorium is not removed, renewed. And homelessness is a Pandora's box for women. It is deeply tied to physical assaults, sexual violence, sexual exploitation, as a number of our community members have shared. We have data from Hawaii, from the state, that 69% of the 97 sex trafficking victims interviewed, surveyed, and identified in 2019 before the crisis, all had been homeless. We also know that 25% of all sex trafficking victims identified in that same survey were pressured to perform sexual activity for a place to stay. Now that's the same percentage that had to do that for money. We know that housing is deeply, deeply tied to physical safety for women. So it's no exaggeration to say that if we don't extend Hawaii's eviction moratorium, if the governor does not take action this Friday, women will be trafficked, women will be raped, women will be assaulted simply because they were too poor, because there was no parachute there for them. And so we have to make that change. So we call on the governor not only to extend the eviction moratorium, but also to support reforms called for by the community, like expungement of eviction records, 
improved access and full exhaustion of rental assistance and more. So thank you so much. Thank you again, Representative Capella for hosting us and uh, thank you to the community.